Hi, I'm Alan Ross. I'm the managing editor of APC Media, our APC Technology Productions, Transformer Technology, Power Systems Technology. We are here at the RE Plus 2023 event in Las Vegas. This thing is huge. Um, it seems like the battery storage people have come here. So we've got wind, solar, battery storage, and everything in between. But hope you enjoy these interviews. I, I love interviewing the technology of the future and enjoy. My next guest is Joe Capetta. Is that, I got it right, Joe That's Capetta? That's right, yeah, thank you. He is with Eaton. You are the director of? Technical Applications for Energy Transition. Technical Applications for Energy, and what's your degree in? Uh, I have an undergrad degree in Electrical Engineering from the University of Pittsburgh. Okay. And I've got my MBA from Georgetown. Okay. Your, your double degree, degree you know, puts you at a level where uh, my respect for you goes higher because a lot of double E's don't come into areas like this. You know, they all only own power electronics. Now, maybe that's where you started with Eaton because you've been with them 14 years, right? Yes, sir. Yep. A long time. Family, kids? Yep. Uh, my wife and daughter, two-year-old daughter, uh, who are back in Pittsburgh now. And, yep, yep. So I have a two-year-old grandbaby in L.A. We were talking about that. Okay, what I want to talk about is you've, you've seen enough as a professional. You've seen enough in the industry as a whole. So let's focus on the, the green revolution, which, you know, back then when we said, we're going to decarbonize, we're going to get there. And it just went bleh, bleh. And it was almost like, you know, running in mud. Mm -hmm. It appears, especially from this event, that we're at scale for many things right now. We're just seeing some things that we've never seen. The speed of change is happening. Talk to me a little bit about what you and the company eat and see for the future. Yeah, absolutely. So we're really invested in what we call the energy transition, and that's everything that really is represented here. Um, and, and that's driving not just demand for our core products, but also investment into new technologies that we're working on, whether it's our smart breaker technology that uh, and shrinks the, uh, that adds some intelligence to circuit breakers for the home, uh, or whether it's our EV charging busway, which uh, integrates EV charging into a busway. But well, really what we're seeing is um, kind of, a, like as you mentioned, kind of a confluence of many mega trends that are really driving not just, um, not just the technology, but also the demand for our products. And we really see the future being, um, again, extremely bright, but as we see the, I think there's the, the with the electrification of transportation, as well as um, some uh, favorable technology 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 advancements. <laughs> Say <laughs> that. Me. Me. <laughs> um, uh, with uh, the lowering cost of uh, metrology, whether it's metering and uh, power or um, um, uh, compute power, right, that we were able to actually add to the edge, uh, along with, of course, the um, lowering cost of batteries being a ma major, major driver. So you used the word metrology. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, now maybe I've just, what does metrology mean? Yeah, sorry to pull out the engineering terms yeah, on here. Right. <laughs> okay. uh, metrology is just the ability to sense uh, whether it's current or voltage, uh, and as well as communicate that uh, either to through a Wi-Fi or through Ethernet. Um, up to the cloud or up to an on-premise device that can make some smart decisions. Okay, we're going to talk about some of the things that Eaton does that that helps bring this transition on. But my my sense is, and just you've been how many of these shows have you been to? Ari Plus. Well, I was in the I was in this industry for a bit, uh, maybe 10, 10 years ago, okay. um, and then um, so I've been to probably four or five of them. Okay. And I, went, I was here last year as well. And from this event, I'm sure you got to walk around. I would say that it seems like we've we've actually reached scale. We're, we're no longer in the oh let's innovate because there's still a lot of people innovating and trying to get money. It's a little late, <laughs> you know. To, to get something that says, oh, we got a great new technology. There are great new technologies, but we now have great new technologies and adapt ad adaptations of current technologies that are working at scale. And suddenly we're now saying, okay, that's what we need to grow. And, and a company like Eaton is big enough to be able to help support that. Um, the difference between where we were when, say, you went to your first show here and now, just, just kind of, juxtapose the two but not not your experience like oh i was in a great hotel now, <laughs> now i'm in a bad hotel no. the juxtapose the where it was then and where it is now in your mind yeah and I, th I think you hit the nail on the head it felt like kind of very much of a startup 10 years ago right when and very much focused on solar and i think 
the battery energy storage was a very small piece yeah. of that, right? Now, as we see today, you know, we have, or we're highlighting things like our EV chargers, our microgrid solutions, our battery energy storage solutions, as well as all the a balance of infrastructure, or balance of system for solar as well. And what's interesting is that that solar piece hasn't gone away, it's only grown significantly. Uh, but then we've also seen, again, all the addition of all these other technologies that really kind of make um, a perfect storm for supporting the growth of solar, but again, also supporting the electric, uh, electrification of transportation, uh, and of course, um, driving you know, demand for all of the you know, safety, and uh, you know, whether it's circuit breakers or, um, or you know, uh, transformers, um, things that, you know, kind of that, that core business that that Eaton's been in for you know, 50, 70, you know, 60, 70 years. Uh, we're, the, all those pieces are still necessary to kind of continue this, uh, this uh, energy transition. And a lot of that change, when you talk about bringing in EV charging stations and uh, de distributed energy, it's, it kind of creates an inverter-based system versus a step down to transfer. It is rapidly aging the current installed fleet. I'm, I'm familiar with the batter, with uh, uh, transformers. They are uh, average power transform in the United States, 39 years old. They're not going to last like people thought they were going to last, right? Uh, because of this inverter base, it's creating a lot of harmonics, a lot of transi transits. That affects everything, cables, breakers, etc. cetera. Um, if you can hear in the background something singing the national anthem, they have a Grand Prix hydrogen car racing track over there. Have I walked past that. Yeah, no, I was hoping to go check that out after this. Well, you can because now I think they're starting. They're doing it. They're, they're going to do O Canada in a minute, too. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you talked about microgrids. What's happening in the microgrid sector that's really going to be the most promising technology for microgrids? Now, they all have a lot. Because when you do microgrids, you create the ability to change the way the grid works, right? In a big way. Talk about that when you mention it. Yeah, certainly. I just want to go back to that transformer piece, as you mentioned. A couple different things that aging infrastructure is going to need to drive a higher demand for transformers. Eaton's actually invested. Um, over $500 million in expansion of our, uh, of our uh, plants in, uh, in investing in Nacogdoches, Texas, as well as um, uh, Waukesha, Wisconsin, to expand our voltage regulator, regulator line as well as our transformer line as well, because, as seeing the unprecedented need for transformers. However, what I find interesting is that the it's interesting with the electrification of transportation and all of the kind of issues that may cause because of the changing load profile of buildings and utilities. We also kind of have the ability to solve that problem. We also have the ability to solve that problem with um, stationary or energy storage, whether it's the bidirectional flow of power into the uh, car and out of it, yeah. or as well as with stationary batteries that again can help alleviate some of that grid congestion that we're seeing from electric vehicles. Um, and so, um, yeah, we're really just seeing, again, with, the, and with that, as we start to deploy more energy storage, as we start to see solar, and we start to see the low prof profile change of electric vehicles, microgrid and micro the ability to have that microgrid controller and then uh, kind of manage all those assets at a local level is extremely important. Right. What I tell people a lot is that electric vehicles are still fairly new, but as fleets start to electrify, that's going, the, the ability to charge that vehicle is going to become critical infrastructure. And people are going to realize that they can't, ha they can't handle a, a utility outage. They can't be dependent on the utility or you know, whether it's uh, natural disasters or uh, plant power outages from you know, states like you know, California that we just happen to see. Now people want to ha maybe manage that themselves and they're able to use um, you know, uh, battery energy storage, solar, you know, plus possibly a fuel cell, integrate all those on their site and then control their own destiny uh, as far as being able to supply power and also fuel their vehicles for you know, that critical infrastructure. Yeah, when you control your own destiny, it creates a level of, I, I trust the situation I'm in. I rented a, an electrical vehicle recently and I, all I did was panic about where I'm gonna get, where I'm gonna get, it's like it was at 48%, will that get me to where I gotta go and back? It was a, it was a mess. Um, let's switch gears a little bit. Let's now talk about Eaton. And, and where Eaton plays in all of these things, the products and services that you guys provide. Yeah, certainly. So, I mean, Eaton has a rich history of supplying um, distribution equipment all the way from 38 kV class down, all the way down to you know, the 120, 240 panel that you have in your home. Um, 
And so we're going to continue to, to you know, execute there and, and grow that business and, and, uh, and do well there. That's your core business. That's right? our core business, yeah. Right. yeah. And, and again, with this, all of the um, distributed energy resources that are being put onto the uh, grid or, or being deployed now, all that is at that distribution class equipment, which Eaton provides. Um, but then Eaton also is investing in lots of different technologies. As we mentioned, we've got an AC level two charger, a charge network management software. We have our uh, DC fast charger, which we're launching at the end of this year. We're also launching a battery energy storage uh, um, unit um, at the or towards the end of next year, um, as well as uh, some energy management systems as well. And, and what's interesting, and, and of course our microgrid controller, as I mentioned. And what I think is interesting is that we're seeing um, the level of complexity, also kind of um, in, whether it's in switchgear uh, or in buildings such as this, or you know whether it's a hospital. We're seeing the level of complexity that you may see in a data center or an industrial facility start to trickle down to your local mall. Right. And lots of people are going to need that technology to be um, reliable and safe and also um, make the right decisions for them. And, and as you have kind of this intermittent power, being able to store that or use it as, as, uh, as appropriate uh, is going to be extremely important. And so having, again, back to the metrology, being having that information on hand to be able to make those smart decisions uh, is going to become, become even more important. I love the fact that you circle right back around to the metrology world. <laughs> Not me again. It has been a delight, Joe. Thank you so yeah, much. Pleasure. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. It.